Thanks for taking a, a few minutes. Um, you know, we've been hearing uh, from just about everybody involved in this business that we really need the governor back. Mm -hmm. Now the governor's back, d d theoretically anyway. D do you expect anything to change? Oh yeah, uh, we have a whole series of problems that are going to demand discussion, negotiation, compromise and agreement. And we need the administration and the governor involved in those negotiations. So, you know, the litany of problems has been talked about, the uh, bad way the pension system is, how we handle pension payments, the transportation trust fund, the whole issue around our, our budget, the escalating property taxes. So there's a lot that we in the legislature have to do and a lot that we need a governor for. Do you think that there's anything in that list that you just gave us that um, you might be able to get to or any signs that there's an opening? Well, the governor has to be here long enough for us to have that opening. And I would hope now that he apparently will not be so distracted with the presidential primary and the Republican Party, he will devote the necessary time to the problems facing the people who elected him. Is it your sense that he's coming back here as uh, a lame duck or is he coming back as a governor who by design, by constitutional design, is one of the more powerful governors in the country? Yeah, by constitutional design, it is a very powerful office. And although he is also prevented by the Constitution from running again, he has two more years here. And we have more than two years of problems to solve. So, uh, you know, in one sense, you can say he's a lame duck because he can't run for re-election. But in the other sense, the more important one, is that we've got to solve problems. How do you think he did? I mean, in, in retrospect, I mean, it's just ended yesterday, but did he comport himself well? Did he represent New Jersey well? Well, I think he was Chris Christie. He was himself a good portion of the time. You know, I wasn't at a lot of these events that he held. Obviously, I'm not a member of the Republican Party, but, um, you know, I mean, I've won elections and lost elections, just as he said. And I do believe having the courage to put yourself out there, that's a big step. I don't denigrate him for that. Yeah. Is New Jersey damaged some by his absence during this campaign? Yes. That I, I believe we have been somewhat damaged. You know, you can't run the state by Skype and uh, email and cell phone. It isn't even a question of, yeah, technologically, you can stay in touch. But when you're distracted running a national campaign, your brain power has just so much ability to address the problems in front of you. Yeah. Turning back to the legislature here, uh, the, the Senate Democrats and the Assembly Democrats seem to have the same issues in mind, but the approach to these issues is somewhat different. I'm, I'm thinking in terms of Atlantic City, um, the uh, casinos in the north, uh, the $15 minimum wage. Are you guys having difficulties working together? Well, sometimes we do have differences of opinion. You know, the old uh, Will Rogers state, uh, statement, I don't belong to an organized political party, I'm a Democrat. Yeah. Uh, and that holds true very often. But the fact is, for instance, casinos in the North, we reached a compromise and did the best, I think, for moving that forward and, uh, and getting uh, the referendum done. So when push comes to shove, we have our disagreements, we have our meetings, we have our talks, and we work it out. You think you'll be able to do that on the minimum wage, et cetera? Absolutely. We have the same goal getting to $15 an hour, how we do it, uh, we will work out. You excited for this upcoming gubernatorial race? Yes, I am excited. I'm excited about the potential of having a Democratic governor back. All right, Senator, thanks very much. Thank you.